Thank you for tuning in to another episode of InRange. This is going to be a hypothetical what-if discussion video. Yeah, and it's not one of the stupid ones. This is... Carl mentioned this to me, and I'm like, whoa. This is a really interesting idea. This is not stupid. It's kind of smarty. Yeah. yeah. So this was actually something that one of the two gun shooters mm -hmm. brought up to you at lunch after the match. Yep. And he said he, he said he had watched my 1860 Henry assault rifle video. 1860 Henry. Kind of it, a different view of what the Henry really was in its own time period. Yeah. If you haven't watched that video, real briefly, I made the argument that the 1860 Henry was the first assault rifle, even though it wasn't select fire. It was high capacity, volume of fire with an intermediate cartridge. Right. Okay. So. After the uh, Henry proved itself on the battlefield and just laid a swath, the American military, U.S. Army, standardized on a full capacitor, full bite battle rifle cartridge, the 4570 single shot trapdoor. Right. They and made this very deliberate choice. We want long range, a lot of power, and they spent like 30 years testing repeating rifles, and every time they'd go, mm, nah, we'll just keep what we have. And my argument was a lot of U.S. soldiers paid the price for that decision because others embraced the concept of high volume of fire. And the question that came up, or the idea that came up at lunch was, what if the US Army had embraced that concept instead of the single shot trapdoor? Yeah, at the end of the Civil War, what if, instead of going, well, we don't have very much money, we better convert all those muskets into single shot kludgy rifles. Mm -hmm. What if instead they'd gone, wow, the Henrys and the Spencers gave us this tremendous advantage on the battlefield. Let's, let's really exploit that and see what we can do with it. What if they'd gone to lever-action rifles en masse mm -hmm. in the 1860s? By the way, I'm not a Confederate, but this is my only... You happen to have that one, Kepi. I, I didn't find a Union one for sale. I so, found this one so, so, they, so they grabbed the old grouchy general that said, no, they'll shoot too many of them bullets, and they right. put a bag over his head and shoved him <laughs> in the corner, and they embraced the lever gun. Right. And it turns out there's a number of lever guns that actually fit that paradigm very well. Yeah, and it's really cool because this doesn't show up anywhere else in the world. Mm-mm. The United States is really the only country that ever seriously played with lever actions. You, you would know better than I. Is that really it? It really kind of is. You see them, and I know people are already thinking it, uh, there are instances where they show up elsewhere. The Russians obviously did buy Winchester 95s in World War I, not because they wanted lever actions, but because that was a gun they could get, or they thought they could get immediately. Um, the Turkish army used them. I know people are going to mention the Plevna. Battle of Plevna. Yeah. yeah, they got used, but... The lever gun was a cultural phenomenon in the U.S. in the way that was not replicated anywhere yeah, else. I, I get that. So what I wanted to say to that, or what I would say to that, is like country music. There's probably a country western star in Turkey, right. but the reality is country western music is an American thing. The lever gun is quintessentially an American thing. Yeah. Even though they got used in like in Russia, yeah. it was still a Winchester. Yep, okay. exactly. So let's say the Americans embrace this American concept of a firearm and start deploying it in a military application. Right. What would that look like? And that's when we started kind of getting this, and it started becoming more and more realistic. Yeah. Which is what turned out to be interesting. So imagine you had your commissioned officer, your non-commissioned officer, guiding your platoon or your division or whatever, and he was with a Henry... Or even better, an 1866 Winchester, which had an improved loading gate in the rear called the King's Patent Loading Gate, yep. which is just a more tactically sound Henry. And a handguard. I mean, this thing gets hot yep. when you shoot it a lot. So you need some way to protect your hand. Video's coming on that, but the 1866 yep. improved it with a handguard and the ability to load it dynamically. Right. So you could actually be reloading your gun on the move. If with that King's Gate loading patent thing, you could keep a Henry or Winchester 66 running perpetually. Yeah. You could fire, put some more in, fire, put some more in, and never run out of ammunition. Yep. Okay? So that would be your commissioned officer or your, your commander or whatever. In World War II terms, that would be your submachine gunner. Correct. Exactly. That's the squad leader, instead of having a Thompson or an MP40, he's got a Henry. You know what? Winchester 66. I'm sitting here sounding dumb, but you made the right term. Squad leader. So the squad leader has that, and so he's guiding it, and he's got this high-capacity, at this point, pistol cartridge, although initially I would have argued it was an intermediate cartridge. Because later on, after the introduction of the 1860 Henry and the 66 Winchester, pistols did arrive right. chambered in 44 Henry. Yep. So you could have a pistol on your side and your 66 Winchester both in the same ammunition. Right. That's a huge advantage. And yep. that's a huge advantage throughout the Old West. Yep. But then you have your riflemen, the main contingent of your force. Right. Armed with still a somewhat intermediate cartridge. Okay. The 4560. I don't think anybody really... Well... A few of you guys do. I think most people don't have a clue 
about what the Winchester 76 is relative, how it's different than any of the others, mm -hmm. and what that cartridge is. So why don't you tell us briefly? Fair enough. So the 1873 Winchester came about chambered in 4440, which was really 44 improved Henry. Okay. A little bit faster, a little and, more velocity. And center fire instead of rim fire, which Correct. Is a big improvement. There was center fire Henry later too. Okay. okay. But the 1873 comes along, and so a bunch of guys went, well, we want something with more power. Mm -hmm. And so what came about is Winchester just kind of upped the action a little bit. They took the fair, strong enough for 44 Henry action and just kind of went whoop and moved it up. And by doing so, they chambered in something called 4560. Okay. It was somewhere between 4440 and 4570. That sounds like an intermediate cartridge, doesn't it? Interesting. Right. So 4570 became the standard U.S. military cartridge, but this was a commonly used hunting cartridge at the time. And a lot of okay. Old West guys used 4560 chamber, or, excuse me, 1876 Winchesters, just essentially bigger lever guns, chambered in 4560. So the, the 76 Winchester is, it's like an upscaled 73. Mm -hmm. and the 73 is a pistol caliber gun. It's yep. not strong enough for a real rifle cartridge. Correct. The 76 wasn't either, but because it was a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. it's kind of like the Walker revolver compared to the 51 Navy. You, it can handle a little more pressure, a little stouter cartridge. They made it stronger by adding, just making it bigger. Right. They added mass behind the parts and it therefore could handle 4560. Right. Instead, and what they would eventually do is change the whole mechanism of the locking system to make it strong enough for rifle cartridges, but that didn't come until the 1890s. Right. And don't forget, we're talking about black powder pressure right. here, yeah. which is not smokeless powder. Right. Right. And that's a different problem. Yeah. So, so, but if you think about this, so 4560, here's the real kicker. The 1876 Winchester, your rifleman, uh -huh. that thing held 15 plus one. Wow. 15 plus one rounds of 4560. Do you know the ballistics on 4560? Uh, top of my head, I believe it was a 405 grain bullet, moving at around 11 to 1300 feet per second. No. But that's... we should clarify later. I'll, I will put it in the text below. Okay. But I think that's about what it but was. That's pretty much intermediate. It's a couple hundred feet per second slower than a 4570. Mm-hmm but also physically shorter, mm -hmm. substantially physically shorter, Correct. right? Enough that you'd have a 76 pretty much this size, right? It was a little, little longer. Long. It was a 28 inch barrel. But you that. know what? The military really likes full length guns. If you put it in context to the full length 4570 Traptor rifle, it is no more of a pike. Okay. So you would have 15 plus one rounds on tap as fast as you could run the lever. That's a ton of ammo. It's and a ton of ammo. Even with that cartridge, that's still something that's easily a several hundred yard gun. Oh, it's oh, not a 44 Henry. No. That's three, four hundred yards uh, if the guy's capable of making that shot. No, but, but 4560 is a very capable cartridge and it was used for extensive hunting as well as combat. Not military, but combat. And it is, is definitely a cartridge capable of ranged fire. What's interesting to me about that is that means this is a, a hypothetical scenario where they're getting the repeat firepower, but they're not really giving up the ballistic effectiveness of 4570. Not within not, the not within the distances of which you would be engaging right. or capable of engaging yeah. at. You know, 4570 is there because we want to make sure we can knock down a horse. <laughs> now they wanted a horse at a thousand yards, mm -hmm. they're gonna get a horse at 500 yards. Back in the day, they Ply. did penetration tests based on plywood. They had a uh, bunch of, of wood yeah. stacked and they would shoot through it. Yep. And in fact, they shot so far that the ballistic trajectory of 4570 goes like a rainbow. Yeah. They had to put the targets like this because otherwise it would be coming in at an angle. So they would angle the target so they could measure penetration yeah. as it went through at 1100 yards. Yeah. And it's interesting. I've seen some of the, the reports on accuracy tests from mm -hmm. some of those guns and they would use giant swaths of canvas mm -hmm. to replicate a target that would be like a regiment of enemy soldiers. And well, so you'd be counting holes in this canvas all over the place. They, that kind of they hadn't yet given up on volley fire. Right. Okay, and then volley fire has a place, but yeah. the reality is when it comes to aimed rifle fire, we know this today, 400 yards is sort of realistic, 300 and in is even better. Yep. 4560 is absolutely capable yeah. at 300 yards. That's not a problem. In yeah. fact, you can even push 44 Henry if you really needed to. Now, yeah. you're, you're kind of like praying a little bit. <laughs> 44 Henry is more of a 200 to 100 yard cartridge, but it's doable. Kind of like a submachine gun. Again. Very much like a submachine gun. Now, I argued it was an assault rifle in 1860 because 44 Henry in 1860 was an intermediate cartridge. Right. By 1880, it was a pistol cartridge. 4560 would now be your intermediate cartridge. They right. just exchanged places, right? Yeah. So, and then you still have a DMR. Okay. And that's the guy with the sharps in either 4570 or even 45120 or some other more potent cartridge. Yeah. Even optically sighted. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, here you got this 1880s U.S. Army division, whatever, battle group. Yeah, squad. Squad, God, I keep using that word, squad. You have an 1880s squad, and you've got your, your squad leader with an 1866 Winchester with 44 Henry, 
and his pistol in 44 Henry. Yep. You've got your riflemen, probably don't have sidearms, but they've got a whole bunch of 1876 Winchesters and 4560. Yep. And you've got a DMR there with a sharps in, let's say, 45 120. A scope, long range sharps. How much would that have changed the battlefield in 1875, eight, or no, excuse me, 1878, 1880, 1885? That would have been huge during the Indian Wars. Yeah. It would have All been of a insane. You're, you're giving them the, the Indians fire supremacy at the same time as the cavalry's long range capability. Mm -hmm. That is a really interesting hypothetical. It's a rifle. very interesting thought experiment, and the rifles actually existed to make this a reality. They just didn't pursue it. Yeah. It's kind of weird wow. and disappointing. Well, like I said at the beginning, the U.S. Army spent a long time quibbling over problems with repeating rifles and deciding that they just didn't want to basically spend the money on the guns or the money on the ammo. Yep. But there's just something that just tickles my heart when I think of the squad leader with a 66, a bunch of riflemen with an 1876, and then a DMR with a Sharps. That just sounds freaking cool. You take those guys and you give them modern training? Mm-hmm. Boy, that's still not a unit that you would really want to necessarily uh, you know, you go can, into a fight against. You know, you know obvi obviously, if you, had a, if you had an AR, you've got a huge upper hand, but if you came across a squad of that today, that'd be a disturbing amount of firepower coming in. It'd be interesting to do a hypothetical of looking at our, our lever action squad mm -hmm. compared to any country in World War II that was still using bolt actions. A 76 with 15 rounds versus a Mauser with 5? The only thing that I think you're losing on there is that the more modern Spitzer bullets had a better trajectory and you had a more higher likelihood of a hit because there was less holdover. True, but in tip in realistic combat distances, that's less not of, that much of an issue. Less of a problem and the ability and we know this, we've shown this on video, the ability to lay down an incredible amount of suppressive fire, even reasonably accurate suppressive fire with a lever gun is immense. Yeah. Far, I will tell you right now, far better than a bolt gun. Yeah. Exactly. Even, even better than an Enfield. You can totally agree. You could dump those 15 rounds of 4560 and have an incredible amount of lead going down range. Yeah. And if you had a bunch of guys doing it, it would be horrendous. And if you started using M1 Garand tactics where it's like and this guy's shooting, and this guy's shoving rounds in his King's Gate loading. Or maneuvering. King's patent loading gate. Or these guys are moving while these guys are firing. You have the full pin him by the nose, kick him in the ass patent tactics in 1880. Yeah, and the hardware would have supported it. The hardware would have supported it, and that was exactly the point. This is why this is such an interesting thought experiment. Now I really want an 1876 Winchester. Me too. <laughs> they do make replicas. Uberti makes them. The Italians do. So you know what? I think we need to go down this path and try to put yeah. this together. And as you mentioned to me, I said, oh, that's great. And where do we find 4560 ammo? And you're like, oh. You can load it on your 4570 dies. Piece of cake. Yep, you absolutely can. Now there are 4560 dedicated dies, but there's no reason not to just load it on 4570. You just put down your bullet seating die and your crimp a little further down and you should be fine. All right, I think we're gonna have to come back. It won't be right away, no. but that's something we need to pursue. That is too cool not to continue playing with as a concept. I agree, and on that note, Think about this thought experiment yourselves. Think about what the implications would have been in 1888. And you know what, put it in the comments. Yeah. This is an interesting interactive exercise. Yeah. And I think we'll see it in a two-gun match at some point. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Anyways, thanks guys for tuning into this. If you like this kind of stuff and these thought experiments, consider supporting us on Patreon. It's what funds us to do this stuff and hopefully obtain an 1876 to do this. And even if you can't do that, we totally understand. Just subscribe to the channel for these cool ideas and share with your friends. Thanks, guys.